is always something happening around the globe. We are here today to get you updated about events and programs from around the globe. A very good evening and warm welcome to Zama Television Collective News. This is Trusty Khatki. Moving on to the headlines. 535 new core infections were added across the country. Parliamentary committee to make the use of marks mandatory. Karin missing after landslide in Sindhupal Chok. Six killed in landslide in Kalikot. Community Forest Users Committee destroyed Green Paddy in the name of afforestation in Kapilvastu. Itaf Hussein Ansari wanted for Kamlabi 15 kg gold case arrested. Hong Kong's media mogul Jimmy Lai released on bail. Sudan imposes curfew after tribal classes kills 32. Here we go for news in detail. According to the Ministry of Health, Corona was found in an additional 525 people during tests conducted in 38 different laboratories across the country. According to Ministry spokesperson Dr. Jageshwar Gautam, Corona has been confirmed in 127 more people in Kathmandu Valley on Thursday alone. Corona has been confirmed in 111 people in Kathmandu, 11 in Lalitpur and 5 in Bhaktapur, said spokesperson Gautam. With this, the number of corona infections in Nepal has reached 24,957. Similarly, five more people have died due to corona. A 45-year-old man from Mohuttari, an 85-year-old woman from Danusha Dhalkivar, an 18-year-old man from Acham, and a 57-year-old man from Morang died due to corona, said spokesperson Gautam. A 40-year-old man from Gaudipur of Siraha Bishnupur Gaupalikawana has also died at Koshi Zonal Hospital in Bharatnagar on Thursday night. The deceased was taken to Bharatnagar on Wednesday for further treatment after he developed fever, typhoid and respiratory problems. In Bharatnagar, he was treated in isolation and after his death, his breathing report came back positive, according to the hospital. After his death, a curfew has been imposed in Bishnupur from 4 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday. Watch Chairman Gopindra Yadav informed that PCR tests would be conducted on all the people who came in contact with the deceased. With this, the number of deaths in Nepal has reached 96. A further 109 people have been discharged on Thursday, while 16,837 have been discharged so far, according to the ministry. Currently, 14,769 people are in quarantine across the country. After some parliamentarians in the parliamentary committee did not wear marks, another lawmaker has drawn the attention of the committee chairperson to make the use of marks mandatory. In the bill management committee under the National Assembly held at Singadarwar on Thursday, MP Jitender Narayan Dev drew the attention of Chairman Parshuram Megi Gurung to make the marks mandatory. Parshuram Megi Gurung to make the marks mandatory while sitting in the committee. A meeting was called on Thursday to discuss how to move the bills in the committee. Chairman Gurung, committee secretary and some other lawmakers participated in the meeting without marks. MP Dev said that everyone should wear marks during the committee meeting as the Constitutional Commission, the court and the Singadarwa Secretariat are affected by the corona. He also suggested not to sit in the meeting without a mask. MP Dev said that health vigilance should be maintained during the meeting. Earlier, the Federal Parliament Secretariat had advised the lawmakers to take the precautionary measures to avoid corona infection. The meeting has decided to discuss the bills in the committee within the month of December and also take suggestions from experts for that. Thirteen people have gone missing after a landslide in Jugal Village Municipality 2 of Sindhupalchuk District. Out of the 13 houses buried, 13 members of five families have lost contact, said Ram Babu Nepal, planning officer of the village municipality. It is said that 30 houses are at risk due to the landslide. A Nepal army team is rushing to the spot from Jirku for rescue, while police are also rushing to the spot from Katiki and Jalbiri. Speaker Agni Prashad Sapkota is also heading to the site by a Nepal army helicopter. Six people have been killed in a landslide in Mahawaigao Municipality 3 of Kaliko District due to continuous rainfall. The house of Watt member Ras Bahadur Bistu was buried when the landslide hit at 2 p.m. on Thursday. Bista's 13-year-old son Pushpa Bista, 11-year-old son Pravin Bista, 18-year-old daughter Sabina Bista and 15-year-old daughter Asha Bista and 20-year-old Rekha Bista died in the landslide. Police have recovered the body from the spot. Locals said that the entire village was at risk due to the landslide. Farmers located in the Ward No. 10 have expressed dissatisfaction after the officials of the Community Forest User Committee of Kapil was to destroy the green paddy planted by the farmers in the name of afforestation. 
The farmers have expressed their dissatisfaction after the community forest officials destroyed the paddy planted by the five farmers of Dhanapur Singh that the paddy planted in the area of Ten Kathas Falls in the forest area. Officials of the Janan Bethi Community Forest Users Committee and the locals of the Thola Thekai have destroyed paddy planted on arable land in the squatter settlement. According to the locals, about 150 locals of Thulu Thekahi under the leadership of Forest Chairperson Lakshmi Tharu and Secretary Sham Tharu have cut the paddy planted in the field. Sham Tharu, Secretary of the Forest Users Committee, said that the new encroachment took place only in the last May. He said that he was forced to cut paddy in the area after locals first fully encroached the area of the forest. Altaf Hussain Ansari, who was wanted in the Kamladi 15 kg gold case, has been arrested recently. A team from the District Police Office, Persha, arrested Hussain. Hussain has previously been arrested in a counterfeit note case. He was arrested from Nizgad in Bara by the police. Police had informed that 15 kg of gold was found in Kamladi on July 27. Of the gold recovered from Sundara, half a kg was found to be genuine and the rest to be gold-coated silver. Police were searching for him, saying he was the mastermind of the incident. Hussein was last arrested from Lalitpur on just 30, 2072, for dealing in counterfeit Indian currency notes. The district court of Lalitpur had convicted him in June 2008 and sentenced him to three years imprisonment and rupees 26.1 million. It has been revealed that Indian citizen Sanjay Patil was also involved in the gold case. He is on the police wanted list. Police had arrested Devan Patel, Vijay Patel and Nile Shakhiya from East Naval Parasi the day after the gold was seized. All three are Indians. Following their statement, plain clothes police constable Prashanna Shrasta and police CRV driver Bahadur Singh Kadayat were arrested at the remand. It is clear that they helped the gold smugglers. The Hong Kong pro-democracy figure and media mogul Jimmy Lai received a hero's welcome as he returned to his newspaper after being arrested on allegations of foreign collusion while Chinese state media labeled him a genuine traitor. Lai, his sons, senior executives from his next digital media company and others including the activist Agni Chao were detained under Beijing's national security law on Monday. Hundreds of police officers also raided the offices and newsroom of Apple Delhi, the popular tabloid Lie founded in a move decried as an assault on press freedom. Most of the teen arrested were released on bail late on Tuesday night. Lie's return to Apple Delhi on Wednesday was live streamed by staff who lined the building stairwell, which days earlier had been full of uniformed police officers. They cheered and applauded as he entered and walked through the newsroom to his office stopping to hug his chief executive officer, Chung Kim Hong, who was also arrested and joking that it was lucky he had not been sent to the mainland. Lai said he was very touched and will go on fight with the support of the Hong Kong people. It was becoming increasingly difficult to run media in Hong Kong, but they must continue, he said. Sudan has beefed up security in Red Sea State and imposed a curfew in its main sea gateway of Port Sudan after 32 people died in recent tribal clashes, the country's interior ministry said late on Wednesday. Sudan is one year into three-year transition after the overthrow of former President Omar al-Bashir and faces challenges including simmering insecurity in several regions and a deep economic crisis. Security forces arrested 85 people over the recent violence, which also left 98 people wounded and local authorities imposed a curfew in Port Sudan to restore order, the ministry said in a statement. The casualties included security force members, local media reports and activists on social media said the clashes broke out between the Beni Amir and Nuba tribes which have a history of mutual violence. Representatives of the two tribes signed a reconciliation deal in September last year after deadly clashes. The government had deployed more security forces to the state to impose the prestige of the state and the rule of law and to strengthen security and stability, the interior ministry said. The security majors had helped to stabilize the situation and led to a cautious calm. It added, Port Sudan is also used by South Sudan to export oil. Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok said in an earlier statement that he had held several meetings during the past week with the community and political leaders from Eastern Sudan to address the political security and violent situation in the region. Hamdok is leading a transitional civilian government under a three-year power-sharing deal with the military. This is all for now. We'll be back with more news and updates. Till then, keep watching Dhamma Television. May all the sentient beings be at peace. Stay safe.